what up what up what up this is mike the philosopher here with another one this you read the title this is love and marriage huntsville i'm not gonna hold you let's go in i'm okay with taking the first step with really trying to see where it goes do what you say you're gonna do girl i am you'll see a decision i made right is that I want to change my name from Hope. I want to go back to my maiden name. One of the things that's going to hold you back, you cannot be a party in any active court case. So we're involved in a, in a court case with Martel. What you and Mel got going on? I know I called him and said, like, you know, do you want to just go ahead and just pay me my attorney fees and stuff like that? I spent this money only because to enforce what's on paper, like twenty some thousand dollars uh, over a whole year. I mean, I think that you and Kyla should be able to communicate, you know, about Monster. I've been fostering that relationship for years. I don't believe that you've even checked to see if this moves forward. Is that really serious? Maybe you guys could have more meetings together. Maybe you guys could uh, work through all that stuff that y'all had historically. Working out you guys past or whatever. I don't have past to work out. That means you're not over. Listen, what exactly do you think I'm going to be over? I'm curious. Listen. What exactly? Hey, it's a direct. I don't want a whole bunch of extra stuff. Hey, listen. What exactly look, look do at you this think? Tone. I want to know. Wow. Answer the question for real, because it's frustrating to go around and around. It's not around. What is around. it you actually think I should be over? I think you should be over the apology, but who said? Who said I'm waiting on an apology? That's your determination. It was yours it, for it, about two it, years. I think there's a whole bunch of apologies that need to go around. For what? For Kiowa. What are oh, you saying? Oh, you're saying that she needs to apologize? Yes. I've been defending you. I've even asked her to apologize. Sweetheart. Her, ah, I was getting you. I don't want a tissue. I want an apology. I let think me tell you, a this hiccup. Is, let me tell you that, that no, no, no. It's not a hiccup. What is it? It's not a hiccup. It's a factual situation of where we are in life. And where we are in life is that I think we've come a long way to be uh, cordial and accommodating because we're raising a king. And we have to be on the same team in order to do that. <clears throat> he got two years left. I like that, Kimmy. We are raising a king. That is true. Even though Monster is a monster, he's still a, he's still a, a prince and a king in training. And I'm glad she recognized that and, uh, you know, uplift that young man. Um, I'm sure he's going to do great in his life. But, um, you know, I would say not often enough do black boys especially get um confidence boosters recognition <clears throat> appreciation um adoration all of that stuff they just don't get it enough uh girls often do you know the princess black girl magic this that and the third um they get it they just get it more often but uh little black boys they don't get it that much so um she is right in that he is a, a king in training and uh, i'm glad she recognized that um and i would suggest that if you whoever is watching if y'all got young boys especially little black boys um you know show them you there for them that's probably monster's biggest problem is that he feel like He's a bit alone. He he needs his mother. He he can't seem to connect with his father. And I know all about that. Me and my son went through the same thing. <laughs> so we we just did not connect on certain things. It is what it is. Um, but, you know, even when he was young, I still gave him the attention and the adoration that, uh, a young black boy is supposed to have, you know, I did a lot of things with him. Uh, 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 but I ain't gonna get into that. But anyway, I'm just glad that she noticed that. And let's go back in. In high school, he's off to college. Like, so for you to foster this relationship at this point. I've been fostering for a long time. I had some, uh, 
obvious resistance from both sides, but you know, we're getting past that and it's getting better, right? And uh, you're gonna be present for all the meetings that I, I set, right? Kiowa allowed and perpetuated a lie about me. We're sketchy. The way you met Maurice, it felt as a line had been crossed. I don't know what Maurice told you, but we weren't the Rorschach. yet. <laughs> we weren't the Rorschach. yet. We didn't date until y'all were wholly divorced. That shows a lack of integrity to me. I don't have friends that I feel like have a lack of integrity. So when you say I'm holding on to whatever it is, I'm not holding on to an apology or to this or to that. I'm saying we are where we are. If have I met you ever a said random... that to her? Have you ever voiced that to her? No. No. And it's a sticking point. And it's I, I, maybe. Has she ever asked? Maybe. Has, I... we, has anybody ever asked? Has anybody ever been remotely concerned? I have. About... No. No. Yes, I have. I could have been ugly like you wanted me to, and a uh, monster wouldn't be living here. I can guarantee that. It's weird that you think that confrontation has to be ugly. I was handling the situation with kid gloves. You wanted me to be a little more stern. Your, I thought your approach was not to approach. My approach, that's not true, because I actually approached. The issue that you feel deep down in your heart, you've never addressed. So Listen, everything is- What's before. funny is that I've been around you in business and there have been people that did you wrong in business and you didn't do business with them again because you found them not to have integrity. You know something else? And so I've what I'm saying- i business with people What I'm saying I, is that you live and you learn. And, and so once you learn that that person doesn't have integrity, you don't worst, do business with them again. You know, that's probably one of the worst- And I've seen that example. in you. That's one of the worst examples. The one person I wouldn't have an extended conversation about my position in this relationship is you. You know what you said and what you haven't. You know what I've done and what I haven't. You know what has happened and what has transpired and what has not transpired. Do you think that having a conversation with her and giving her the opportunity to address it would be better? Maybe, maybe in a one-on-one -on -one moving forward. I'm going to set a meeting for you and Kaiwa later. Maybe dinner. That's what I'll do. You said you'd be with all the meetings. I'm just going to set another meeting. Maurice does a lot. He does pretty much all he can to protect Monster and Kaiwa's image. And a lot of times it is at my expense. So no, sir. I'm just not like, I'm just not as interested in having more of these conversations. Right. So, let me say this I really do like Kimmy's uh, patience as a woman she has um, she has a, a patience level that is probably <laughs> not the norm in our community I'll put it that way um, a lot of uh, uh, I'll just be real a lot of sisters probably would have uh, blown up by now um, uh, and and a lot of a lot of this stuff they, she, they just would have blown up by now they wouldn't have been so patient and so uh, cordial and you know because look I, I, I kind of look at her as being a bit of a uh, temperament role model for women like if you had to dial it down and dial down your temperament and and get conflict resolution, I would say look to Kimmy. She's one of the people I would say look look to Kimmy on. If you don't know how to do that, if all you know how to do is get loud and loud and obnoxious and ah uh, yeah, and I'm not saying this is all sisters. I'm just saying uh, this is just. Uh, or all women for that matter. I mean, either, even other races, but I'm talking, I'm talking about the black community in, in particular, but I just noticed that her demeanor is not the norm in our community because there would have been a lot of sisters who would have just got just belligerent and just probably would have been talking over Maurice the whole time. Wouldn't have been listening 
um, definitely wouldn't have kept that same tone of voice and probably uh, wouldn't even be trying for conflict resolution. Uh, now, Maury said, I'm going to set another schedule. You going to be there? And she said, yeah, I'll be there. You know, that's what I'm talking about. That's why she's that's why she's a wife. You know what I mean? Because she knows how to move um in with conflict resolution and 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 her temperament is is uh above average, I would say. That's why that's one of the reasons why I like Kimmy. Is because she she don't like drama. She don't like she don't like conflict. It's not something that she thrives on she don't got that hood in her I guess you could say and she just really wants to have peace in the household you know that's why she's a wife that's why that's why she was drafted um anyway let's go back in hold on I'm about to send that now would you like to write up my agenda for this meeting since you set up the meeting? Nah, I'm going to let it free flow just so that you guys can talk some more, get on the same page, so that we're all on the same page. No, at least you guys are. You do you. I am. Because I'm here in this situation because of you. That's what you're going to do. Because of you. No, I've also addressed it. No, because of you. I also have addressed so it. So all the caveats that you have and all the stuff that, Kimmy, let's do this because I really want to get Monster and all the bullets that I bit because you wanted to get Monster, then you just bear that in mind while you're having your long conversations about what I need to do differently. No, it's not that. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, well, as soon as I gave her a lot of praise, uh, she kind of walked off. Um, you know, I'm not saying she's not human. I'm not saying that she's not a work in progress, you know. Um, that was still, how she handled it was still more productive than the majority of of people. So, uh, shout out to Kimmy. Uh, I know that you know uh you know she she didn't kind of like how maurice was uh conducting things and i get that i mean you know look when you disagree with somebody it's hard to really get uh positive conflict resolution all the time i get that i get that so but i still think she handled it as probably as good as she could have handled it um for the most part, but let's go back in. Okay, girls, we have to lay everything out, okay? Now, I could decide if we should do like a natural look for y'all first photo or do like, you know, big girl look. Today is the very first photo shoot for the Macy and Mila brand. The girls, you know, they have been very involved in the entire process. It was important for me to make sure that the girls are learning as we go and grow this business. And on top of all of that, we want to make sure we have the marketing materials out for the Black Business Expo. So y'all ready for y'all poses? Yeah, I just want you guys to have fun. Bam, there you go, come back. Way for them to make money, have fun, and do something they like to do. 
let me say this uh cute girls uh i think it's real dope that uh uh leticia is starting a business with her girls i gotta say that that's real dope um i don't know if they white labeling or anything but you know look you on a tv show you got your girls monetize that i think um run from run dmc he he did that with his daughters and his daughters uh they created a brand i think they created it by themselves but they had the spotlight they created a brand and it took off so if yeah yeah if you on tv monetize the crap out of that you know get some products white label them put your slap your name on them and sell them joints you know what i mean um i think that that is very dope i think that uh if you got that type of spotlight and that type of platform then you should do stuff like that so kudos to her i noticed the girls in the face they look a lot like marceau though they they, they <laughs> i mean he looked like he spit them girls out but anyway let's go in Wait, i think i got it missy how's it feel i come bearing yes look down again it's probably scratching and irritating i got it you good give me a hug <laughs> All right, big girl. Good thing about kids' photo shoot, you just don't know how it's gonna end. All right. <laughs> well, you look cute. Okay, we got a short dress on. I like your hair. <laughs> Thank you. You look pretty. I like your blonde locks. I know. Goldilocks. Some, some different. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by and bringing them some food. Is this all for the kids? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna go take this break so I can eat, and I'll be right back. Okay. Cool, cool. With so much going on with preparing for Mobile. Um, the Black Business Expo is trying to make sure we have the right marketing materials for the girls' product line. It was so nice of Kiki to stop by and show her support because this schedule is packed. This is the first sense because this is what I use in their hair the most. Mm -hmm. Like the moisturizer and also their oil. Okay. So once we get this going, then we'll come out with like, you know, shampoo, condition, everything goes on down the line. Oh, wow. Yep. So that's then, amazing. So I'm back working on it. So well, I heard through the uh, grapevine. I'm mad because you ain't tell me. What? But I heard that something's supposed to be happening down south. Oh. Uh, yeah, and I'm not Mobile. Yeah. I didn't realize how big it was. They like, asked me, they was like, we Did want you, you to be the okay. Grand Marshal. Somebody giving you a key to the city. Yeah, giving me a key to the city. And you don't realize how big it is. I guess because there's so many things going on in my mind and I'm doing so many different things. I'm like, okay, and now I'm back to this. And so my manager, she was like, Tisha, this is like a big moment for you. Like you're busy doing things with for scope, for Marcel, for the kids. You have right. to take time out to celebrate you. I think that is amazing that Leticia is getting the key to the city of Mobile, and I am so proud of her. I just wish I heard it from her so I honestly just didn't think it was a big deal. I know it's last minute, but are you available to come Saturday to Mobile, you know, for the celebration? Where there's a celebration, I'm there. What good? <laughs> and I do apologize. I don't That's know okay. everybody, everybody last minute. I, and look, uh, I understand. I know that we are all busy. I so. just don't want you to take it like, oh, I'm an afterthought, because it wasn't that honest. Oh, I, I know I'm not afterthought. I know I'm a problem. Okay. <laughs> it better be. Coming up on Love and Marriage Huntsville, the only times we have antagonistic conversations is when her making implications like I interfered in their marriage and that kind of thing. That makes well, it... do you feel like you interfered in their marriage? Absolutely not. I was pissed. I was upset. I, I, I can't lie. I don't like being subpoenaed to court. Mm. You're supposed to be sticking it to him, Mama. Well. And like when you got up there and like you went, like you didn't say much, that disappointed me to the core. Do you really want to be with me? Today. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hey, girl. 
When Kimmy finished her chemo and was getting ready for her surgery, I had hit her up and told her that I wanted to take her out, you know, to a spa, get a massage. So here we are. I hope she's ready for a good treat because this is a different kind of massage. What are we about to do? Okay, go ahead and tell her. So we're going to do, it's an M shape. So it's going to contract your muscles. So it's okay. a muscle stimulator. So it's going to burn fat, tone your muscles. Um, so it's like doing 20,000 crunches without doing anything. But just laying it for 30 minutes. Okay, but then that like hurts the next day. Like if you, you do 20,000 crunches. Yes, yeah, so you'll feel a little bit of muscle soreness. Like you just did an intense workout. workout. But you did nothing. But she works out here and there, so she's oh, good. So she'll be all right. right. You'll know that, yeah. Okay, right? We'll see, we'll see what well, time Have you started that working out since like I got every a, day? I, I want to get a bike and get back okay. to the 100% okay. workout. But okay. no, we go up, I go upstairs and get on the trail. Oh, you want to go first or you want me to go first? Okay, I will. Okay, okay. perfect. <laughs> all right, let me grab Miss Jessie. She's going to get y'all set up. Okay. okay. So you got to get on the uh, bed. Let me sit my purse down. You want to, you got it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like... You finished up all your treatments, right? I haven't quite finished radiation yet, but we're getting okay. there. Okay. I genuinely feel so much better than I have over these last six months. Okay. The biggest thing that is wrong with me at the moment is that I'm just tired. I'm sure Maurice and Monster and Jalen, they all helping out a lot, which, you well, know, we're still working on that. Everything's not like at 100% at like, Monster and Maurice helping out right this second. You know, what? Monster, well, Monster's 16. He's 16. Yeah. So the whole clean your room, take out the trash, like, we're just having a struggle with that. And that bleeds over to me and Maurice, you know, having conversations yeah. about you should do this or you should do that or you should do the other thing. How you doing? Pretty good. I'm coming to get you set up on the MC. And I'm your first Kennedy. Awesome. <laughs> What's your name? Kimmy. Nice to meet you, Kimmy. Nice I'm to meet get you as you well. Set up. So what I'm going to do is hook this strap to you, and then we will put the paddles on you. Okay. And this is using electromagnetic field okay. to cause muscle stimulation. Okay. So we're burning fat and building muscle at the same time. Okay. Come on, Kimmy. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Give me abs. I'm new to this. <laughs> But I'm open, you know, anything that can kind of give you a little shortcut, I'm game for it. It's a pretty facility, so, you know, hopefully they know what they're doing. Have you had a baby? Okay, so it's not gonna come anywhere close to that. Okay, just check. <laughs> Let me say this. Um, I think that I, I understand how I don't know how to pronounce her name. Uh, Quinoa or, or something like that. Quinoa. I understand why she felt like that, that Kimmy inter, uh, interfered with their marriage. Um, but I said this in another recording too, ladies, when you break up with a man, oftentimes the man is gone. 
sometimes when you when you think that y'all are still together that man sometimes is gone you can't play um what is that you can't cry wolf in other words okay especially with men you can't cry wolf men get tired of that you cry wolf you're gonna you're gonna find out that he either smashed somebody else or he's dating somebody else or he about to marry somebody else that's just is what it is you know i don't blame kimmy for that situation i don't really blame anybody for that situation um you know, the ex-wife felt a certain type of way. She felt like maybe if Kimmy wasn't in the situation, she could probably have rep- reconciled with Maurice. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, it looked like with Maurice, the damage was already done. So if he was really interested in reconciling with her, he would have done that. But he didn't see the need to go on. He wanted something fresh and new. And Kimmy is, for the most part, very agreeable. And I don't take uh, her, the ex-wife, as being that agreeable. I really don't. I don't. I don't take. She seems like a sister that is uh, very combative. Very. Um, her conflict resolution is probably is not as good as Kimmy's. I can tell you that right now. Um, cause, cause I seen how she moved in the past and, and from what I remember, she can be a bit, uh, she can be a lot. Okay. So I think Maurice was like, look, I like how more, I like more how Kimmy move. I'm going to just pursue this. I'm not interested in reconciling with, with, uh, quinoa or uh, I forgot her name, but, um, I'm not interested in reconciling with her. This other woman sparks my interest. She has more of an agreeable personality. Uh, we can get conflict resolution done better. She's looking more like a wifey to me than 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 my ex is. So, no offense to you. So, it's, it's it was Maurice's decision. He obviously chose Kimmy and... If, even if I have to add a little bit more to it, I think he chose the better of the two. I'm just keeping it real. Like, I know that it would have probably been better for Monster if Maurice would have worked, worked it out. But, um, you know, he he's seen the value in Kimmy. He's seen the value in Kimmy. And... You know, it probably wouldn't have gotten better between them two. Probably just wouldn't have. Probably would have been getting even worse, actually. You know, so, uh, you know, water under the bridge. Let's all move on, you know, and, uh, I, you know, and that's what he did. So, so her blaming Kimmy, I don't really think that that's fair to Kimmy. Kimmy was like, look, y'all was, uh, y'all wasn't together when we started dating. Now, was were, were they, only really Maurice knows this, but I think they were seeing each other while he was still legally married. You know, um, I don't think that it probably got to a point of, let's say, intimacy until he was already divorced but i think they were probably seeing each other while he was separated from her and and by the time they got serious they, the the process was over they were divorced and and um so yeah i think that's how it kind of happened but you know it is what it is let's go back in Over by the time I met them. It was unfortunate because I felt that after the implication was made, she just kind of let it run wild. 
and she knew that it wasn't true. So, I, that didn't make y'all's relationship no, any better. not at all. Yeah. Is she here now? We're supposed to wake up. You know, and Maurice was the one who even suggested it. Y'all look out of me. <laughs> right? You yeah. excited? Hey, ladies. Hey. Feeling pretty good? I'm feeling. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little break real quick, okay? Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say a bubble hug. Yeah, say, I was thinking no, about president. <laughs> me and Melody would have been in here tussling. <laughs> I'm going to give you a break. So, yeah, how did you feel about that last course six meeting? Like, do you feel pretty confident? It sounds like you're the one that's not going to participate if the thing come around on the whole sponsorship, money, payment. Well, you know, I actually, um, I recently met with Tisha. We had lunch, and it was a, you know, pretty decent meeting. You know, I just pretty much shared with her my feelings, my thoughts, and I appreciated her respecting that, you know what I'm saying, and not trying to pressure me. You know, it was clear I told her, for one, you know, Martell and I have this custody thing going on. I'm not trying to do anything with him. I'm um, not really trying to be around him that much either, to be quite honest. But even if he was removed from that piece of it, mm -hmm. With everything else that's happened, I still wouldn't. When I see that you and Martell can kind of coexist from time to time, I do think that's admirable. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't always know the status of y'all's right. court case. I know it's taken a while, right. you know, to kind of come to a meeting of the minds. Yeah, I mean, it's taken a while because it's literally been to the point where my attorney has ha had to file for different sanctions because... You filed and asked for full custody, but you're not turning in the paperwork that's required. Um, the only reason we have the final court date coming up is because I asked my attorney that they hadn't set a date. I'm like, file something asking for a date. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know Somebody what I'm saying? Because, ask for a date. right, like people don't understand just how emotionally and mentally draining it is. Absolutely. Just even knowing that someone's trying to take your children, me knowing the burden I'm carrying, and then you want to try to say you want full custody, it's it's crazy. This is an mean, emotional roller coaster. And as an adult, you got to think it through because yeah. they are their daddies. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like a stranger saying, I want these kids. You right. know what I'm saying? Like the whole mind that goes on when you're trying to work through making the right decisions for your children. Yeah. You know, at some point, y'all got to learn how to be in the middle. Coming up on Love and Marriage Huntsville. So when you text me, I was like, it's just another excuse. Something always comes up. When you're supposed to do something to be somewhere and you're not there, something always comes up. Ella and I, we had a, a big showdown in court. She took the stand, I took the stand, my mom took the stand, and Chris Fletcher, he took the stand. I felt like Chris was honest with everything he answered. I was. But I said Chris ain't going to jail for nobody. No, ma'am. It was tough. To me, it was hurtful, you know? Darling. Ready to Love is back. I was pleasantly surprised by the group of men. Me. He has clearly been in the gym. Friday, Friday, Friday. Ready to Love. New season premieres Friday at 8, 7 Central. You know, I had never blended curls, now. Oh, really? I never blended the curls. And I was like, you know what? This is going to be a look. <laughs> now, they didn't like somebody here, so she should be pulling up shortly. Okay. Just so you don't be like, what? <laughs> no, I just don't pop up in here. No, I appreciate the heads up. I invited her to come. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm kind of upset with her a little bit, so I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm finally ready to talk to you, so well, you can meet me at this time. No scrapping, you in the chair. Exactly. So I hope she willing to listen. <laughs> Mobile was awesome. I had my family with me. I received the key to the city. Tonight, our inaugural grand marshal, Letitia Moore Scott, we're giving you the key to the city. <laughs> If I keep not showing up in Mobile, it's just another letdown. This is the reason I stopped inviting her to things because she's always letting me down over and over and over and over and over again. And so I feel like this right here is just confirmation for me to really, really be okay with moving forward without keeping a part of my life. I need like a paper or something. I'm so happy. 
You want to use my little hat? I'm cold. You hot? <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do in the summertime. Like, they probably have to help me. Who well, wants to help you? The, <laughs> the doctor? The doctors, yeah. Oh. Because it's, it's, I've never prescribed like this before. Is it something that they're giving you to take or something? Yeah, oh. the side effects of the medicine, the methadone. Because when I did chose a rehab, I chose to do outpatient. But is it like trading one, one thing for what? another thing? Yes, you do have to take a substance okay. every day. But this is not a substance that hurts you. The whole purpose of it is to prevent any kind of withdrawals when you're coming off of it. Because withdrawals, mm -hmm. they are no joke. So it really does help and give you a cushion. So what do you think it's going to take for you to be like, I'm done with all of it? I feel like I'm done with all of it. I feel like I'm at the point to where I can wing off. Because okay. I've been taking it for a while. How long have you been taking it? Uh, almost a year. It is really good to hear that Kiki is finally getting help with her addiction. However, I need to see some action because Kiki, she is flaky and unreliable. Now, the whole Mobile trip. How did Mobile go? It was good. It was really, really good. And I was excited to have you there because it was like a major moment. Like, getting the kids to the city, being recognized, I agree. Um, being a grand marshal, like, it was something major. And I really wanted to share that with you. So, when you text me, and I was like, it's just another excuse. Do you honestly think that I... Shout out to Letitia for getting the key to the city. Um... I got to research what what benefits come with that. I'm curious to know. You get a key to the city. What what does that mean? Um You can you can put it in the comments, but I'm going to research it myself to find out what what benefits uh I mean, if it's just an award, that's cool. But you would think that key to the city would come with some kind of perks. So I'm a, I'm a research to find out. It probably varies from city to city. You know, um, as far as her friend not showing up, you know, it sounds like she got, she's an ex drug addict too. So, uh, I don't know. You gotta, <laughs> I don't know. I it should. I, I, I would say you shouldn't expect so much from her because she got some battles she's clearly dealing with and not being reliable. That's one of the characteristics of somebody who is getting over some, you know, substance abuse. So if it was me, I wouldn't have high expectations. I probably wouldn't even tell her about the event because... I'll just be, you know, setting myself up for disappointment, which is kind of how Letitia feels now. She just like, uh, I don't even know why I told her. Uh, but I, I think she found out from somebody else and she addressed Letitia about it. So she kind of had to spill the beans about it. It was like, yeah, I didn't think it was a big deal, but I don't think she had any intentions on telling her because she got some problems so let's go back in i didn't want to be there your actions should back up your word okay but wanting to be there and not making the effort or doing whatever it takes to get there is another thing that's the thing right. i did make the effort i called a few places they all out of cars if i would have had transportation i would have been there mm -hmm. i did not want to come i didn't come because i couldn't I had talked to you and showed you what I was going to wear. Mm -hmm. I was going to be there. Something always comes up. When you're supposed to do something to be somewhere and you're not there, something always comes up. It was not intentional. It's never. It's always something. I mean, it's just, it's just, but it's just I couldn't drive my car. I mean, was going out of town. So what, what could I do if they were rent to me? I, there was nothing I could do. It's just, you know, just somebody just letting you down all the time. It's just not, not okay. I can't keep allowing, you know, you just can't keep allowing someone to keep hurting you. Like, you have to make a change. You have to lower your expectations, you know, try to move them out your life. Coming up on Love and Marriage Huntsville.
Why we got to be up in the courthouse? These people ain't taking care of your children. These people don't care about so I wanted to see how y'all's conversation went with you and Monster. If that kind of panned out, anything. I'm just like, he needs his mom. You know, you just can't keep allow someone to keep hurting you. Like, you have to make a change. You have to lower your expectations. You know, try to remove them out your lives. I honestly, I told Marcel, I said I have to protect my feelings. Yeah, you do. Cause I, I, was I feel really, really, really hurt. Agree. Like I was yeah. really hurt. I'm going to say I'm very sorry for letting you down again. I guarantee you, with everything in me, it was not intentional. I really wanted to be there. I was not happy about it. I feel like it's always an excuse. You know what? I'm, I'm getting better. I'm really trying to get some order. There will be many more important events that we'll have in the future. And I guarantee you that I will be there, God willing. So I assure you, I'm apologizing to you for missing that um, event in Mobile. Well, <laughs> to change the subject a little bit, I have this Black Business Expo coming up. Mm -hmm. It's going to be for small businesses. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have vendor tables available. We want businesses there to, you know, um, showcase their products, showcase their things, and allow other people in the community to support them. Right. So hopefully you can make it. I'll be there. I just need for your actions to back up your words. That's it. a lot of you know older gentlemen who are <laughs> dancing and getting a uh, boogie on on tiktok uh, tiktok is for everybody i guess um you know however you want to express yourself i think it's cool they got a nice house i wonder what if y'all know what what the fletchers do for a living let me know because I, I don't know what they do for a living um but it looks like they they doing pretty pretty well uh you know so all that being said let's go back in y'all know y'all was being subpoenaed no i didn't take it anymore come on once again martell has involved the fletchers in the middle of what we have going on and literally subpoenaed them without a heads up even, <laughs> to our court date. To me, that's not the way you move with friends. Knowing they know both parties involved, you don't involve them in your bull So I felt like it was only right for me to reach out to them, stop by, fill them in a little bit, and also let them know that I hate that they've been brought in the middle of it. I was pissed. I was upset. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't lie. I don't like being subpoenaed to court. Mm. You know what's so crazy? Even whenever, it's like every witness even that he had, honestly, even his own, like, mother, <laughs> mother and the people he subpoenaed, mm -hmm. were like, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. like, what have you witnessed? Both of them do stuff with the kids. I saw both of them. It was weird. It was weird. Was everything okay? I'm still close to dope from court. Nelly and I, we had a, a big showdown in court. She took the stand, I took the stand, my mom took the stand, and Chris Fletcher, he took the stand, and Marcus, who was Nelly's brother, he took the stand as well. Crazy to say that, you know, we had to pull friends and family into this, this court thing. So today, I'm, I'm visiting with my mom, so we're gonna discuss it. It was tough. To me, it was, it was hurtful, you know? And you know what, and it was hurtful for me too, you know, because I just hate the fact, you know, y'all in the courtroom. 
about y'all's kids. About our kids. And, and that, that's crazy. <laughs> Why we got to be up in the courthouse? Yeah. These people ain't taking care of your children. These people don't care about I guess you didn't get to see much, because I think you was on the little stand for about four minutes. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <clears throat> you know everything that's been going on. We talk about it all the time. So when you have like an opportunity like that, you're supposed to be sticking it to them, mama. Well, and like when you got up there and like you went, like you didn't say much, that disappointed me to the core. When I'm in there, and they, and they ask me a question, yeah. I give them the answer. I ain't volunteering nothing. You're supposed to because he asked you a broad question. Well, duh, I ain't even used to doing all this crap. Me either, mama. So you know, don't be coming at me because you know that you handled it. You my mama. And yeah. And I mean, you my son. And, and you I know, you're supposed to come and show up and show out. Well, you know what? You show up and show out. I did. And you did. That's why I went in my and favor. And that, that was That what matters. Chris, he got on the stand. Oh, you had to talk to him about that, didn't you? Yeah. And him, too. You can know Chris. I didn't get a chance to. Yeah, you didn't go in. Mm -mm. I felt like Chris was honest with everything he answered. Looked like, uh, yeah. You know, with a divorce, you got to put everybody on the stand. And, well, you really don't do that. I mean, most times, a lot of this stuff is settled uh, with the first judge or through arbitration. But um, I guess Melanie opted for a trial. I was about to opt for a trial in my, in my divorce, too. Um, but, uh, I let some stuff go because, uh, I was like, look, if we, if we do it this way, then we ain't got to go to trial. But if she don't agree to this, we got to go to trial. Um, and, and the reason why is because you want, you want, you want your case to be heard in trial, uh, so that it can be fair. Uh, I was, I, I say it now, I, I was feeling like I was getting railroaded. Okay. Um, and that's why I was very close to going to trial, but it looks like, uh, Melanie is the one who want, wants this trial. And it looks like they're in a stage of, you know, the after, the after effects. I don't want to say that it's not an after party, but the after effects where they both kind of deliberating with their, their, they went back to their corners and now they're talking it over with their people. Uh, it's pretty clear to, to, to see the Fletchers is on Melanie's side. And, you know, obviously, um, uh, Martel got his mother and his brother and stuff on his side. Now, his mother should have wrought roll for him. Like, just go all out. You know what I mean? And that's one thing I loved about my mother she will ride for me she would ride for me if I needed her she would go hard in the paint for me um for the most part for the most part um it, her kryptonite happened to be my ex <laughs> okay but uh but for everything else she brought she she went hard in the paint for 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 me um However, I would say that he probably should have debriefed his mother uh, before the trial. If if she got subpoenaed and all this other stuff, he should have went over her house and been like, look, mom, this is how I want you to do this. I want you to go this, that, and the third, hard in the paint. It sounded like he didn't really debrief her much. And then he just left her to her own devices to go up there on the on the stand. Now he probably felt like she was going to do that, but apparently she didn't do that. So it's like, why don't you ride harder? You you was taking it too easy on on, on Melanie. And, and if the, I don't know if it's just my situation. It seemed like it's Mar Martell's too mother-in-laws for men have weaknesses for their daughter-in-laws i don't get it i don't understand ride 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 for your sons man for real i mean not man but you know what i'm saying ride for your sons okay we need we need uh a, a woman in our corner and who else but our mother like don't be giving her this leniency don't be giving her this 
you know uh you know put put your foot on our throat <laughs> for real like when it comes to divorce and stuff like that you know look you got you you should be choosing a side and it should be mine period so i can understand martel not being happy like look ma I, you, you were supposed to ride for me in court you was being passive why because it's melanie like i don't care what the circumstances is i don't care what the circumstances is the line is drawn and I know some women might be like, uh, oh, I don't know about that and this, that, and the third. Look, women ain't got no problem having people ride for them. But men, we have all kind of problems having people get our back. And we ain't always wrong, okay? It's just so unfair to a lot of men. Even when our own mothers won't ride for us when we need them to. And that's just ridiculous. I, I don't even understand that. Um, so I can understand Martel being a bit, uh, you know, pressed about that. But at the same time, he should have went to the house and prepped his mother on what to say and how to move. But anyway, let's go back in. I was. I said Chris ain't going to jail for nobody for no uh, perjury. No ma'am. No ma'am, well, no sir. You knew Chris wasn't going to lie about nothing. Then my attorney started asking about the house that he's currently in because Chris has a list for sale. So my attorney, his thing too has been how many times has Martel moved at this point since you left? Oh, isn't it about to sale? Yeah. Yeah. It's under contract. Say what now? It's under contract. It's under contract? You know today. So he been have to move again? Ooh, child. Can you imagine the stress? Oh, Ooh, child, move. that's why he probably asked me to pay for his attorney fees. <laughs> he oh. need that money. He got to find a new Did he ask you that for real? He Martell. asked me that for real. Is he wrong? Tell me now. I love it very tiny bit. I just really want to know why she wanted to go to trial. So she ain't said why she wanted to go? She said she wanted full custody. Here I am having to go to war for my babies. That I love on and take care of. There's a part of me that still ha it holds on to things that you would say that I was the one that caused y'all's divorce. My attorney started asking about the house that he's currently in because Chris has a list of herself. Can you imagine the stress? Oh, Ooh, child, move. that's why he probably asked me to pay for his attorney fees. <laughs> he oh. need that money. He gotta find a new Did he ask you that for real? He asked that for real. Is he broke? I don't know because I don't keep up with his finances. <laughs> you know, this is part of some of the things that, you know, we've talked about and some of the things you would have to face. You can get that divorce and go to court and try to tell him. Y'all did this, many a time. Yeah. When we were married, Martell enjoyed the lifestyle that he had as a dual income household. Now, I guess he's having some cash flow issues. It has to be that. I don't know why else he feels due some of the money that I'm making. I just really want to know why she wanted to go to trial. It, it still bothers me to this day. It's like, why did you want to go? So she ain't said why she wanted to go? She said she wanted full custody. But why would she want full custody? She ain't been saying she wanted full custody. The reason we're in here for custody is because your attorney and you tried to be slick and the day we had that protection order hearing, right before, like 30 minutes before court, y'all filed for a change of custody so you wouldn't have to go in that courtroom for for uh, for the protection. But did she say something about, ooh, did she tell you six months? <laughs> Mama. Oh what, my God, what kind of stuff is that? I said, were you serious about, you know, me keeping him for six months and then you keep him for six months? She said, yeah, I mean, you want to do it? I'm like, I can't, I can't believe her. Who does that? I said, girl, I can't, I'm having to go a week without my children. Because you fight for your kids, especially when you know you're a good parent. You know what I'm saying? Ain't none of us perfect, but you can't never sit here and say that I just harm my children or just put them in all this harm's way and you got to worry about if they fed or not or if they got clothes. You don't have to worry about that with me. I take care of my kids. Here I am having to go to war for my babies that I love on and take care of. You can't or don't want to deal with them. Just, 
really had to go to court. Just give them to me. But see, I've had this talk with Martell, and, you know, I've asked him a few times, man, just drop it, Martell. I mean, we all, we all know what has happened. Uh, we ain't had to go back and talk about the baby and uh, everything that kind of changed things, I think. What happened? Who won? Nobody, really. So, everything stayed the same. It's still weak on, weak off. Now, I will say, in the judge's ruling, so I'm appealing it. For one, there was clearly a bias happening. Do you know in her final ruling, she tried to say, oh, it's clear that the father has the best interest of the children at heart, but the court can't say the same for the mother. <gasps> and guess why? Why? You know I changed my number in October? And I didn't give oh, him my new number. number. According to the Madison County Parenting Clause, you're not supposed to harass the other parent. So my attorney, Martell, just admitted to following me on a date recording me. She just admitted it, harassment. Like, so what did she have to say about any of that? Nothing. Not one word. Martell probably made her feel sorry for him. Before we left court, she, she sent me my, sent me her number. Oh, really? Yeah. The judge heard me out when it came to Melody being in contempt by not giving me her phone number. And all the paperwork shows that I was co-parenting correctly, and she wasn't. It actually says that, that Melody was not co-parenting properly. I mean, you just continue being a good father to your children. I am. My thing is how you try to come down so hard on me about not giving a person my number who we just showed and he admitted to the harassing things he's done, but he literally ignored about four of your orders. Like she kept giving him extensions to turn in his bank statements and to turn in, just always giving him extensions to do counseling. I'm considering filing an appeal when it comes to this case. I feel like the judge didn't take everything into consideration. Like, yes, the other parent should have your number as long as they are not using that for harassment purposes. Don't follow her on dates and record her. Don't call or text her about anything unless it's pertaining to the children. And that's what she missed. I'm gonna figure it out. I know you are. Huh? I know you will get to bother. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Friday nights, we are our sisterhood. We got singles and non-stop mingles. I'm ready to just have some fun. Get it, girl. Alright, now, let me do this. I am going to play judge and jury of the Martell and Melody situation. <clears throat> Brace yourself, okay? Because a lot of t a lot of people may feel like uh, my judgment is not going to be fair. Um, here, here is the judgment. First of all, Melanie makes a whole lot more money now. I think because they were in a marriage I think that Martell is entitled to half of that money if if the roles were reversed and he was making that money and he started making more money than Melanie all the women will be on board with Melanie getting half of the proceeds of that business or whatever that Martell has. After all, they're on a reality show and a lot of her success is due to this reality show. Uh, a lot of the, the success in her other businesses is due to that. And, and they were married. They came into this TV show as a married couple. So I do think that Martell is entitled to half, like half of whatever their whatever their net worths is. I think Martell is hot, entitled to half of that if she makes more. I think that Melanie is entitled to half if uh, Martell makes more. Whoever makes more, I, I think that the proceeds should be split in half. It will. Ha it, it, it would be the situation if the man made the most. I don't see no different with Melanie. Now, 
with the kids i do think that the kids are probably and believe it or not i mean even the judge said it so i'm 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 going to say that martell is probably going to be the better parent of the two now some might disagree with that i get it because melanie is a woman and one the kids always go to the women i get it but even the judge sees that martell is a better parent you know um it is possible it is possible for the man to be the better parent sometimes and you know with melanie going to you know these extravagant islands and she got a new boo and all this other stuff uh she ain't really trying to have those kids full time let's just keep it real i think the reason why melanie wants to uh have custody of the kids is so she don't have to pay martell child support i think she's trying to hurt him as much as she can financially i don't want to have to share none of my businesses i don't want to have to share uh, I don't want to have to pay him child supports. I don't want to have to do anything. I don't look. I look. L- listen, she love her kids. I believe strongly that she love her kids. However, I don't think she's a better parent than Martell. I just don't. But I think she wants to go to court and get custody, full custody of the kids so that she can get child support money from Martell. At the same time, not having to pay him. The, the kids often are, you know, a point of contention when it comes to divorce because it's, it's for the most part a tug of war between the parents between the parents on on because none neither one of the other wants to pay the child support so they they fight for custody i think that's the case with in this situation i think she's only fighting for custody because she don't want to pay him child support which is kind of sad and martell is like look you want you want to do 50 50 now look I'm 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 good with 50-50 too. If 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 uh you know they want to do the six months thing, I think that's what Martel said that Melody offered. Let's do six months each. Kind of tells me that she still doesn't want to be the full time custodial parent. She got a boo. She got places to go. She got a business to run. I don't think she's gonna have time for the, for the kids. To be honest, because she's she's on her star rising she's on her um you know her fame right now so and martell ain't gonna have much of fame and he's not gonna really be profiting outside of uh this experience because a lot of people just don't like him and for for good reason too i mean he did some pretty creepy things you know pretty messed up things in this marriage to to make it get to this point but i i never connect that uh being in a relationship to being a parent you can be a a jerk and as a husband but be a great father uh both can be true so i think that uh you know i think that whatever this whatever she's whoever is making the most money i think they should give half of that to the other spouse because that would only be fair especially since they tv personalities and they brand pretty much is intertwined with each other so split the proceeds you know if she got melanie cosmetics or whatever i think he deserves half of that that company um uh, you know, as far as the kids go, I think that Martell should get the kids full time. And I think that Melanie should be paying him child support. Um, and, and that's pretty much how I see this going out now. That's probably going to, uh, it's probably not going to go like that, 
but we'll see. I just I I just don't like the idea that Melanie is trying to play um pretend like she wants to be a full-time parent when she really don't. She's just doing it out of out of out of spite. At least that's what it seems like to me. She's just trying to do this out of spite so she don't have to pay the guy. I mean, I get it. Don't get me wrong. I get that. Nobody wants to have to hand money over to the other spouse. So I totally get that. But um, if you're not the best parent, you're just not the best parent. You know what I mean? For the sake of the kids, do the right thing for the sake of the kids. Let, let, let Martell have the kids. Anyway, let's go back in. Hey, hi, you doing good? How's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. I agreed to go ahead and have this dinner with Kaiwa. You know, to give us an opportunity, in all honesty, to have a couple of conversations. First of all, is Monster. The other is probably going to touch on some of the things that have happened in the past that actually got us to where we are. If, in fact, we're going to move forward, they actually need to be addressed. I was hoping we could have a little snack. Mm -hmm. One, because I wanted to see how y'all's conversation went with you and Monster, if that kind of panned out anything that might be useful as far as the best interests of Monster. He's carrying some emotional baggage. I, you know your child, you know what I mean? It's like, he needs his mom. When you were talking about um, being more present, being here, like what would that look like for you as far, because that might be helpful to him. Yeah, that's something that, um, I would have to figure out now that I know that it's more needed than it was before. It's going to happen. I just don't know exactly how. I like the concept that Kaiwa plans on coming down a little more often um, in Monster's best interest. I think, you know, I think he'll enjoy that. And I think emotionally it'll be good for him. As for me and Kaiwa, I, I don't know. I'm hopeful that we'll start to get a little better if she's here more often. Sometimes we take two steps forward and three steps back. So I'm just kind of keeping my fingers crossed that maybe a little bit more time would kind of put things on a better track for us. Marie. Again, I like Kimmy's demeanor and her disposition. She seems like a cool, reasonable chick. A part of me feel like she wants kaya would have come down so she can take monster <laughs> off her hands uh i can kind of get that because if i'm not mistaken kimmy is going through chemo and, and you know cancer treatments and um you know she's already raised her son so it's like I got enough going on. If you can come get your son and y'all, he, he can spend time with you. Everybody's happy, you know. Not that I don't love Monster, but I just got a lot going on. I'm trying to heal here myself. So I, I could use a break. I shouldn't be the only person parenting over here. Okay, y'all, this is y'all kid. So, you know, be more active and, 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 um, you know, and, and present in his life. Um, let's go back in. He was like, I want y'all to go out to have a talk. And I said, talk about what? <laughs> I did. I was like, what do you want us to talk about? And he was like, you know, just kind of the past and moving forward. And I was like, I think where we are is a good place. And I don't want to mess up the place that we're at. I don't want to go backwards. Even when you weren't that happy with me in the beginning, it wasn't a major deal for me because I felt like you were in a space that you had to get out of. I, you don't even know how many times I would tell Maurice, like, this is what I think she's feeling. This is a single mom's perspective, like what she's thinking, like in Michigan, why you're thinking this down here, like all the time. And so when there were times that you were upset, I would be like, she has no idea, like that I'm down here fighting with you for her mm -hmm. you know and so in my head i felt like it was just going to take time for you to get you know to whatever place that was more comfortable for you right however there's a part of me that still it holds on to things that you would say that would imply that i was the one that caused y'all's divorce 
Kaya will always have this look like this chick. Boy, I tell you. She got some nerves. Almost like she necessarily biting her tongue, but it's just like you can kind of see the thoughts in her head. Like, first you take my husband. Okay. Then you, you know, now you're trying to be condescending, condescending to me. Like, this chick really like how is she better than me i don't understand why maurice chose her why is she better than me i i, I she seemed a little resentful she seemed a little um i mean she's trying to keep it cool you know or like right here She's trying to keep it cool, but with Kiowa, I can kind of see her emotions. I can, can I can kind of read through her mannerisms and her facial expressions. And it seemed like all the while she thinking, I, I really would prefer not to deal with this chick. I really would prefer to just, you know, deal with them deal with Maurice he we should still be married uh I should still have my family and I don't understand why he think this chick is so much better than me and you know and she got the nerve she just got the nerve to 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 say this that and the third to me um that, at least that's what I'm getting looking in her eyes look look at her eyes right there that's a look of are you serious you see that that's a look of chick if you don't go on somewhere that's that's what that look is anyway let's go back in what did i say like i was seeing your husband while y'all were happily married in your house and that was never the case like that was and we all know that that was never the case. I think that was for me where my biggest issue for me and you came in. Just being looked at like I actually caused the demise of y'all situation when all of us know that I didn't do that. That was difficult for me. I don't know what you want me to say to you. There was opportunity for you to say, no, I didn't say she was a side chick. I never said you were a side chick. Even though you didn't say it, surely you saw some comments about me being this side chick. I don't do interviews. I don't talk to fan base. I don't do any of that. I didn't know that you felt that I was responsible for what they said. just like a lack of integrity. Next, a love and marriage hunt still. I felt that that was just like a lack of integrity to let it be perpetuated. I'm sorry you feel that way, but I had no control over that at all. I have no control over that. Sometimes you would rather avoid the harder conversations because it's easier to just shut it down. Now, I'm gonna tell you, if I avoided hard conversations, I wouldn't have hosted no tea and I wouldn't have came here today. We're here because we're looking at the center for the Black Business Expo. I would like for you to be a part of it. Like a replacement for Melody. Though. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm down. I'm, I'm gay. I love doing stuff like this. It's for like the community and like business. <laughs> And there you have it, uh, Love and Marriage, Huntsville, Alabama. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm expecting some drinks to be thrown in, in somebody's face uh, next week between Kimmy and uh, Kiowa. Um, I got to give it to Kiowa, though. She still keep her calm. She's keeping her cool. Uh, uh maybe a bit more than i expected to be honest but she still got that look on her face like i ain't have nothing to do with that and this chick this chick this that and the third so uh we'll see how it all shakes out um let me know what what do y'all heard what i have to say about this whole thing what do you think about 
my verdict with the uh, Melanie and Martell thing. What do you think about what I said about Kimmy and Kiowa? What do you think about uh, Kimmy and you know uh, Mar Maurice that I said? Uh, uh, you know, just let me know all of that. Uh, I'll be interested to know. Hit the like, share, and subscribe for this channel. I would appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.